Hey there Paper Geeks and Glitter Nerds, it's Anna the Crazy Geek Crafter and this is a Christmas card shadow box. Sometimes it happens that you make something and it turns into something and this is one of those times. I was making a uh, prototype for a shadow box uh, before I made my uh, Halloween card with the fairies. I just needed to figure out how it worked um, for a smaller size than the slimline I had already uh, calculated. So yeah, I'm just making a paper template trying to figure out where I would have to score it to get a nice size box uh, and it would still fit in, in a standard envelope for a European size. After doing the paper template I also needed to make an actual box just to make sure that I had everything correct. I cut a piece of A4 paper straight down the middle and this is technically not long enough to make a shadow box because I will also need about a centimeter worth of hinge so I'm gonna make that separately which is this smaller piece that I cut off the excess and here I'm scoring it in the middle doing it the easy way, just folding it in half afterwards I had to figure out how much I wanted the sides and the front to uh, take up so I have 15 centimeters in total I make five of those the side and ten of those the front or the back side so to try and figure out where to score the end to make sure that it's right I uh, just put the, the middle score line in the slot and then do the ten centimeters again and then I score the uh, hinge piece the reason why I don't just score at 25 centimeters is then I will be missing some millimeters at the end because the paper is not actually 30 centimeters long. That was also why I folded it in the middle because I was unsure whether uh, to score at 15. I think the 15 on my scoreboard is actually a tiny bit off to accommodate A4. So that's the reason. I was trying to decide between a square and a round window and I end up uh, choosing the round. Since this was not supposed to actually turn into a card, it was just a project to get a feeling for making shadow boxes for European sizes. I didn't really think about the hills I put in or anything. They're not even actual hills, they have straight lines. Uh, but I just needed to know that I could make it and how I would do it. So here I'm making the hills, the inserts scoring it at 1 and 11 just that will fit with the front after doing double and triple videos for some time now I really needed a break, that's why you're getting this more calm, small project, um, which kind of just happened. I just needed to craft for crafting, and I always film when I craft, so I actually have a lot of videos lying about that I never used for, uh, for YouTube. And sometimes I take them out when I'm stressed and I don't have the time or energy to make a, a video for you so that there's at least some content, because I love making videos. It's very relaxing and calming to me. But this is one of those, I didn't think I was going to make a card out of it, I didn't think I was going to make a video, but both happened. After making the two uh, memory boxes, I have been completely unusable. Um, I had quite a few other big projects planned for these weeks, and I I'm uncertain whether I will get any of them done in time since it took uh, so much out of me so I guess that's just learning to deal with your shortcomings Using tape is not always the best solution here. I actually ruined the box, I think. Uh, so I have to take it apart and uh, fix it. So here I cut the hinge in two pieces. And since this is red tape, this is not coming off easy. Uh, furthermore, when I did this box, I should have thought about where I put the hinge. The hinge should be uh, actually on the front panel and the side of that one. 
so that you can actually see it. It had should be hidden behind the window and instead of the back side of the box, which you will be able to see from the outside. So here I'm switching to liquid glue, and this is my Kalel. It's a very strong glue. Once it's dry, there's no moving it. And I love it for it, but it also means I have to hold the box in place for a longer time. That's why I didn't want to use glue. But this will ensure that I actually get the box um, patched up and functional. So on to the relaxing part of this video for me at least. Um, you can see the dog sleeping in the corner. We were just hanging out and crafting. Me crafting him hanging out. But it was very relaxing and something I needed after all the Halloween projects that were pretty heavy. I do believe I did this card before I did uh, the memory box. Um, enjoy the uh, crafting. These gems right here are actually self-adhesive and they came in big sheets um, in some images and I cut them apart. They're supposed to go on the back of your phone but I just use them for crafting purposes.
So, the dog is gone, but I found some dogs to keep me company anyway. Uh, I actually just need the tree from the stamp set, and then I'm gonna put a bear in this box. I'm gonna do some very simple coloring with some browns and whites. I wanted to keep this uh, pretty monochromatic, well, as close to as possible. That is also why I'm stamping out in this brown ink instead of black. I do use black for the face. I find it easier than trying to draw it in later myself. Just get it over and done with.
Using the brown marker to hide the white paper actually made this tree look like a cookie, in my opinion. But it was better than black. And here I'm trying out my design to see if I'm missing something. And I think I am. And this one actually came in the door just in time for this project. So I'm gonna use these beautiful, beautiful snowflakes. They're fewer years old, but I've been wanting them for as long as they've been out. And they are really gorgeous. But they take some time to get out of the dye and get all the loose parts out. So you have to be willing to put in the work.
Isn't this just the sweetest? I really love the white and the brown. They uh, really do play well off of each other. Another Christmas card done and until next time I hope you'll be having a good day, evening or night.